If you got pregnant while on a Glow Body PT program, congratulations. This video is 100% for you. Or if you are trying to conceive or just open to getting pregnant, if that is the way the Lord blesses you, then you are absolutely going to benefit from every detail of this video. And I want you to stay till the end because I have specific suggestion for you on which Glow Body PT program has been the most beneficial for fertility. In the early weeks of pregnancy, you wanna keep everything nice and boring. So if you weren't already training for a half marathon when you conceived, now is not the time to be ramping up your mileage. Same goes if you were consistently exercising four or six days per week, you don't wanna shock the body by quitting exercise altogether. During the early weeks of pregnancy, you want to maintain the same type of fitness, same frequency, and same duration. What I need you to modify is your max effort intensity scale. So if one used to be zero effort and 10 is your all out max, for the duration of your pregnancy, your new max effort needs to be down at a seven. This means you can still push yourself pretty hard, but there's no need to give all out sprints or all out max heavy lifts while you're pregnant. The good news is all Glow Body PT programs are safe for first trimester of pregnancy. So if you discover you're pregnant, I highly encourage you to complete the plan that you're on right now or get as far as you can through the 13th week of your pregnancy. After week 13, you want to move over to prenatal specific training. The Glow Body PT prenatal program is completely for free as a small way to bless expecting moms and babies. And you have over 70,000 women who have come before you successfully on the free prenatal program. Here's the deal though. You want to start the prenatal program at your exact week of pregnancy. So for example, if you're 12 weeks along and you just completed firm 30, don't try to go back to week eight of the prenatal program and play catch up because that is for eight weeks of gestation. Instead, you're going to hop right in where you're at at 12 weeks of your pregnancy so that you can stay safe for each week of each trimester as you progress through your healthy pregnancy. Here's the deal with diastasis recti in first trimester. If you are on the 12 week post pregnancy plan right now and you discovered you are pregnant, Keep going so that you can get your abs as intact and as fit as they can be before your baby belly expands again. But if you're on another program of mine that's not designed for diastasis recti and the ab exercises are much more intense, rest assured that there is no exercise that you can do up until about 16 weeks of pregnancy that is going to exasperate your diastasis recti ab gap and spread your left and right rectus abdominis muscles farther apart than they're going to be naturally when your uterus expands and pushes your abs apart later on in third trimester of pregnancy. So keep doing your intense ab exercises so you can start this pregnancy really strong and fit and toned. Glow Body PT women, I know that you are in great shape, but I need you to understand that there are going to be physiological changes that start in the early days and weeks of gestation that are going to make you feel out of shape, even though realistically, you're still in great condition. Almost as soon as you conceive, your body starts to produce a little bit more blood. And over the course of your pregnancy, you're going to be producing approximately 45% more blood than your non-pregnant self did. This is in order to deliver nutrients and oxygen to your baby, and it also helps prevent some risks for you during your labor and delivery. When your baby is only eight weeks in gestation, your cardiac output will have already increased by 20%. This is mostly due to the stroke volume, so what used to look like this is now like this. It's much stronger, and not only that, but to a lesser extent, your heart rate can even increase. And fit women know that when your heart is beating stronger and faster, exercise 
feels more difficult. From a hormonal perspective, progesterone hormone is increasing as soon as you get pregnant. This hormone is responsible for making you feel short of breath, which I can notice as early as five or six weeks pregnant. Progesterone hormone is also responsible for making you feel more fatigued or drowsy. So if you find that you feel like you're being a lazy sloth, know that it's actually God-given hormones that are encouraging you to chill out a little bit so that you can grow a healthy baby in your womb. HCG hormone is also increasing in early pregnancy, and this will happen fast. It's going to make you feel a little bit lightheaded or dizzy. Be aware of this when you're transitioning from floor-type exercises to standing exercises so that you can take it a little bit slower and prevent unnecessary dizziness. There are just a couple of exercises to modify if you think you might be pregnant or if you do get pregnant on one of my Glow Body PT programs. The first is the barbell hip thrust from Lean Fast Strong Cable Plan. Instead, simply do this unweighted. Same goes in Firm 30 when we do dumbbell single leg bridges. Instead, remove the weight because there is never a need to put resistance on your uterus if you could be pregnant. Skip any exercise that makes you feel so unstable that you could potentially have a fall, like this stretch from the cardio series. If you're wondering about high-impact exercises such as running, or box hops with a step down, those are completely healthy and fine for first trimester as long as you are doing that pre-pregnancy. You can also continue to do heavy resistance barbell training if that's what you were doing before, as long as you remember to bring down your max effort or max heavy lifts to about 70% as what you were doing pre-pregnancy. One technique that you'll never hear me recommend on Glow Body PT programs, but sometimes I'm guilty of doing myself, so I want to share with you in case you aren't aware of it, is the Valsalva Maneuver. This is when you're on your last couple of reps and you unconsciously hold your breath in order to get through those repetitions. This is unsafe for pregnancy, so if you find that you're doing this, It's a sign to decrease your load or effort so you can be pregnancy safe. If you are feeling so awful during early pregnancy that you're seriously wondering, should I even exercise when I'm pregnant? Or maybe you feel guilty because you want to exercise, but you feel terrible. This is because of a combination of metabolic endocrine factors and HCG hormone which is making it so that you either can't consume adequate calories or you can't keep it down. You may be on more of the mild end of the spectrum, and if this is you, then go ahead and have that carby snack of crackers and peanut butter pre-workout so you can reap all of the benefits of exercising while pregnant. That's certainly what I do. However, if you are more on the severe end of the spectrum and you're at the point where you're not even sure You can consume adequate calories to not lose weight when you're pregnant and you have the potential that you might be in a caloric deficit. This is not safe for pregnancy. So I don't want you to add the stressor of exercise, which would increase metabolic and caloric burn even further, putting you in a deeper caloric deficit because you need all of the calories your body can hold onto in first trimester in order to grow a healthy baby. Exercise typically reduces stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol, and it increases feel good endorphins. However, if you have a history of one or more miscarriages and you feel so anxious and scared to exercise, this is something that you need to bring to the Lord. You need to bring it to your midwife or to your doctor and prayerfully consider if the added stress that you were feeling surrounding exercise is worth the benefits. At this time, there is no correlation that exercises increases your chances of miscarriage. Around 80% of miscarriages are linked to chromosomal abnormalities completely out of your control. 
Other factors include advanced maternal age, obesity, and alcohol consumption. But if you still feel just this ache about exercising and you don't want to do it, know that it is okay to abstain from exercise in this season if you have come to the conclusion that it is just not healthy for your unique circumstance in your pregnancy. Whether the stress is perceived or actual, it's okay to take a step back and not exercise for this season. Now, for those of you who are trying to conceive or hope to grow your family in the next few months, get on the 10-minute plan. Me and my team joke that everybody gets knocked up on the 10-minute plan, and I'm convinced that it helps establish a healthy hormonal environment because you're training two hours per week on an ultra flexible schedule that keeps you on track so you can have strong arms, legs, glutes, toned abs, increased energy, healthy libido, getting good sleep at nighttime, but it's also not overly stressful on your body. And when you pair this with healthy, fast, easy recipes that are about 30 minutes or less, you are making healthy eating easy so you arrange an ideal hormonal environment for conception. The volume of messages that I have gotten from excited moms who have become pregnant on the 10-minute plan is quite overwhelming, and I am prayerfully hopeful that if you want to grow your family, that the Lord will bless your desire too. If you haven't already, go to glowbodypt.com and download my free prenatal program so you will have it when you need it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, press subscribe to join me, and let me know in the comments, was this video helpful? Was there anything that I forgot to add? Experienced moms, I would love and value and appreciate your feedback for other moms so they can hear encouragement from you. I love you ladies and congratulations if you are pregnant. Bye.